All right, we're at the Dallas International Film Festival talking to Katherine Hosen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We really appreciate you coming down to the festival. It's my pleasure. All right, so we just screened Guess Who's Coming to Dinner right here at the Dallas City Performance Hall. Did you sit in on the screening? Like, do you like no, to watch your films? I, I can't do that because it always makes me cry. Uh, Spencer Tracy died um, about two and a half weeks after we fin finished shooting. And um, this, I have to watch it in the privacy of my own home because I make a fool out of myself. That's beautiful, though. I mean, sad, but that's really beautiful of you to say. I like the way, you know, I always think it's interesting to see when a movie, when the credits come up and they say, and introducing, and in this case, Katherine Houghton. So what was it like bringing, you know, kind of classic Hollywood icons, you know, Spencer Tracy and of course, Katherine Hepburn to, you know, meeting new Hollywood icons, you know, you acted with Sidney Poitier and... How did that go? That just seems like the most incredible experience. Well, it, it was a wonderful experience, but it was a very sad experience in many ways because right from the beginning of the film, uh, we knew Spencer was dying. And so every day, it was you'd wake up and you'd say to yourself, I pray that he's still alive. Because he really wanted to finish the film. He, he knew he was dying too. And actually, after the first day of the film was over, um, Sidney Poitier and I were up in San Francisco filming the airport footage. I got back to the hotel and my aunt called me and she said the film has been canceled. Yeah, right up my nose. <laughs> I said, what happened? Right. Thinking yes, it was Spencer. She said, well, Columbia Pictures says that Spencer cannot be insured. But really what it was is they found out the plot. So how did you move forward after that? Well, St uh, Stanley Kramer, the director, his widow, said that Stanley came back that day, paced back and forth and back and forth. How am I going to trick them into doing this? And he all of a sudden had the idea, and he said, I'm going over to Spencer and Kate. So he... They dashed over there and they went into the house and Stanley said to Kate, I've got a solution. You and I won't take any salary until the film is over. And that way, Spencer doesn't have to be insured. Oh, it's crafty. And that worked. That's amazing. So she called me back and she said, the film is on. <laughs> back on, keep going. So we went out and did the rest of the shots. So, since it was so important to him to do this project, even though he knew where he was in life, what do you think that this meant to him? Well, I can tell you exactly what it meant to him. At first, he didn't want to do it. And Stanley Kramer said, you've read the script. And Spencer said, yes. He said, so what are you going to do, Spence? Are you going to just sit here in that armchair until you drop dead? Or are you going to do something important? So he was really the inspiration. I like and I guess he made up his mind. <laughs> yes. So he said, I think I'll do something important. That's amazing. When now looking at your own film resume, you know, the only, you know, big credits that they have you listed for prior to Guess Who's Coming to Dinner are some television credits. Was this really your first film? Well, I had been um, in the New York area in college and I'd done four uh, college type films. So, although that was very small potatoes compared to doing a big Hollywood film, it, exactly, you know, I didn't feel um, as though like a fish out of water. Also, I was only 22 and I didn't really completely comprehend um, the rarefied atmosphere that I was working in because my aunt was my aunt, right? You know, I'd known her all my life. Ho hum. <laughs> and my, much more important, 
I mean, it's a bit of both. Was this on the, on this atmosphere of terror? that Spencer wasn't going to be able to finish. That was the dominant thing. So everybody was very uh, careful to not bother him or uh, get in his way, but he, he asked me to come to dinner every single night of the filming. And he told me all of these stories about Hollywood and all the people he knew, most of which I cannot tell you. Um, because he enjoyed having an audience. It wasn't that he particularly liked me, but I was, he knew I didn't know anything, right? So I was a fresh ear, and although I remember a lot of what he told me, I really should have written it down because it was all fascinating. Now, having Ms. Hepburn as your aunt, how did, did she give you any advice, you know, regarding this is your first film role and this is how people might look at it, this is how people may view you as an actress if this is how you make your debut? She said, learn your lines and don't trip over the furniture. <laughs> so I also very good. <laughs> tried to do that. But um, her main focus was Spencer, which probably was lucky for me because she left me alone. <laughs> What, is, what was that like? You know, I would that make it more or less intimidating to, you know, my dad is a musician, and when I was a child, being on stage singing with my dad made me more nervous than being on stage singing by myself in front of my entire high school. I wasn't nervous with Kate. I was more nervous with Spencer because from the time that I was a small child. All of us kids in my family looked up to him. He was, he wasn't just an uncle or an aunt, right? And so I was nervous about him. Well, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. We really appreciate you coming to the festival. Thank you for your interest.